a very warm welcome to our service this morning from St. George's, Berlin. Welcome to those of you who are watching this service at home. Today is the second Sunday after Epiphany. The Epiphany season is a season of manifestation, the showing of God, and we're going to be praying and opening our hearts for God to reveal himself to us and to our world in these days. Our soloist this morning is Eleanor Forbes. Our organist is Scott Clemens. It's good to have you sharing in this worship, service of worship. We begin with the opening solo, Ye Holy Angels Bright. Mm. celebrate this service in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. St Paul wrote, The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. At the beginning of this service of worship, we call to mind our sin and the sin that mars our world. We call upon God to have mercy and to forgive. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent and are themselves forgiving. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray together. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading from the book of Samuel. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, my servants. 
my frame was not hidden from you, but I was made a secret, broken in the depths of you. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. On the way you were put a woman and stood. As day by day they were fashioned, when the next doubt there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God? If I count them, they are more in number than the sand. And at the end, I am still in protests. A reading from the Revelation of St. John. I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent out into all the earth he went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne when he had taken the scroll the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests, serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, 
son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, There is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where do you come to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, if any of you own a classy, traditional red-letter edition Bible, that is an edition that shows the words of Christ in red, then I would like to invite you to open it now and read the first chapter of the Gospel of John because the first sentence Jesus speaks in John's Gospel which stands out so beautifully because of the red could perhaps be our spiritual heading for this still fairly new year and brothers and sisters and of course if everyone else can also take their Bible, even if everything is written there in black on white. There in John 1, 37, a few verses prior to our Gospel passage today, Jesus asks the question of all questions. And this starts his ministry. What are you looking for? What are you seeking? In other words, for what do you live this life? A life you did not choose. No one asked you if you wanted to live it at all. No one has asked you what time, what culture, what political and economic circumstances, what gender, what sexual orientation, what physical and mental condition, and what family you want to be born into. I am suddenly there, joyfully expected or unwanted by my parents. And after quite a short time, I'm simply gone. A Japanese poem from 700 AD paints this impressive or maybe perhaps depressive picture. Being in the world is comparable to what? As if in the spring light a boat rowed out, it leaves no trace behind. Being in the world is comparable to what? 
as if in the spring light a boat rode out. It leaves no trace behind. Given the undeniable finitude of our lives, it is absolutely crucial to discern wisely and carefully what the purpose of our life is. But dear friends, even if you grew up in a family or culture where you were given very clear, indisputable goals or a purpose in life, for instance, work hard, get a good education and job, be economically successful and earn a lot of money, find the right partner, get married and start a family, strive for the good of your family and the society, or the more hedonistic approach, enjoy life to the fullest. At some point, most people ask themselves, often in a crisis, is that everything? Is it really true what I have been taught about meaning of my life, by my education, my culture, my religion, or through media, or what I have told myself? What if it was perhaps just one-sided, superficial, or even harmful? I have to admit to myself that up to now I have only ever fulfilled the expectations of others. Ultimately, I cannot delegate my answer to the sense of my life to others but can only answer the question myself. But isn't there a danger of self-made egoistic individualism? Finding myself probably in a bookshop in front of a large shelf of self-help books and esoteric, or I attend expensive seminars on self-optimization. Many of us here in St. George's have gone through such phases of life. And for many of us, myself included, seeking and finding this church has become a turning point in our spiritual lives. And we have begun to answer our question of purpose anew. We want to consciously live more and more as people for whom Jesus is the way the truth and the life. And we try to encourage and support one another on this way. So, if Jesus is to be our point of reference and our relationship with him is to give meaning and direction on our lives, how do we become more and more authentic disciples of Jesus this new year. So let's turn back to John's Gospel. Five times in these few Bible verses the word found occurs. In verse 40, 41 we read, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, first found his brother Simon and said to him, we found the Messiah. Verse 43, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. And in verse 45, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. But finding requires that we have started searching. Hence the question at the beginning by Jesus, what are you looking for? To become, become a disciple of Jesus, I have to be a person who is seeking. And when I start searching, I have lost something or someone important. 
and dear to me. I am incomplete. I'm missing something or someone. There is a void in me, a longing, perhaps a hidden pain. I have to realize and to admit that emptiness and loneliness in me will not go away on its own. But that's how the human psyche works. We do everything we can not to feel it. Work even hard and longer, perform even more social activities and charity work, even more destruction through extensive sports, media consumption, drugs, shallow entertainment, or hoarding. Dear friends, sometimes it takes us years or even centuries and only a deep crisis in our relationship, family or professional life or serious health issues make us realize the long denied reality. I don't always have everything under control. I not and not everything can be planned by me, and reality doesn't necessarily conform to my ideas about life. The aspiring disciples of Jesus, Andrew, Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, and an unnamed disciple, they had already understood that the life they had lived did not answer their deeper probing questions and their spiritual unrest. That is why they had joined the spiritual awakening movement of John the Baptist. It prepared them for the unique encounter with Jesus, which simply changes everything. It shows what makes a follower of Christ admitting to myself and to him that I am missing something very essential and that my life needs to be changed and healed. This may lead me to a search for new solutions, makes me impatient and curious in a good sense and releases creativity. Secondly, to become a disciple of Christ, I have to let myself be found. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel replies, Dear friends, Philip really had to search for his friend Nathaniel out in the fields until he finally found him under a fig tree. Some commentaries explain the fig tree story by telling that it was a typical habit of Torah scholars to study the scripture under such a tree. That my, may also have been the case here. Nevertheless, it doesn't quite hit the punchline of this remarkable scene. There is a lot to suggest that Nathaniel was simply hiding behind and under the lush canopy of the fig tree. Fig trees can become very spreading bush-like trees and they have huge green leaves, the branches often reaching just above the ground ideal for literally disappearing and vanishing. And this explains also Nathaniel's astonished and quite embarrassed reaction. He was truly caught by Jesus. But anyway, what can come out of Nazareth, a town in the woods that is not even mentioned in the Torah? At least Nathaniel retains his fine, dry sense of humor, a characteristic that can often be observed 
in introverted and sensitive people. And Jesus winkingly and teasingly counters with two quotes from the Psalms. Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. A wonderful example of Christ's subtle humor. An agnostic friend asked me a few weeks ago, do you really believe that a deity who created the entire universe is personally interested in me? Isn't that ridiculous and absolutely presumptuous to assume such a thing? Following Jesus means trusting that he wants me personally. Really, really me. He means me just as I am. He calls and finds me. He truly, he cares for me. More than that, he deeply loves me. It is absolutely correct. We have nothing to offer God, zero. In fact, we should be hiding from him and from each other all the time. Being human means being deficient, making one mistake, one sin after another, hiding out of deepest chain like Adam and Eve, who interestingly also hid behind, the fig, behind fig leaves, or like the sensitive Nathaniel, who hides under leaves, the leaves of a fig tree, out of fear and shame of not being enough for Jesus. But with Christ starts something completely new. As Luke said, for the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Unlike in the Garden Eden, not, no one is punished and exiled, but the incarnate God lovingly embraces us and welcomes us to find the meaning of life and happiness in him. Or as St. Paul in 2 Corinthians put it, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And John puts it like that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And the Word made became flesh and dwelt among us. So let us, let God find us. Well, so what does it take in some to become an increasingly authentic disciple of Jesus who realizes the God-intended meaning of life? There is number one, being grounded. That is, sober perception of reality. Disciples of Jesus do not paint the reality of life pretty or all black, deny it, twist it, or dram dramatize it. That takes courage and healthy skepticism, but not general suspicion. Number two, open-mindedness. Disciples of Christ are curious in a good sense, confident. They keep moving physically, mentally, and spiritually. They do not disregard their body and health, nor that of others. They continue to educate themselves and deepen their spiritual life. This stimulates rationality and generosity, a sense of responsibility and creativity to help shape the world and make it a place where confidence, justice, peace and the integrity of creation are ever more prevalent. 
And number three, humor and serenity. Humor is to face the shortcomings of the world and of human beings, the everyday difficulties and misfortunes with serene composture. I don't say that. The Duden does, the unerring dictionary of the German language, and the Duden should know what humor is. Followers of Christ are humbly aware of their shortcomings and do not hide their vulnerability behind a mask of strength or moral superior superiority out of shame. They do not take themselves too seriously and have a great sense of humor. They trust in God's grace and love alone. And how else do you spread the God, good news of Jesus except with humbleness, serenity, humor, love, and joy? Dear friends, this were my thoughts this Sunday on how we can stand and grow together in following Jesus as Christians in St. George's and beyond. And at the beginning of this new and still very challenging year, Let's be grounded, open-minded, with serenity and humor. Let me please close with a prayer that the Lord Chancellor, who lost his head under Henry VIII, Sir Thomas More, wrote and prayed, prayed at a time that was anything but easy and fun. Grant me, O Lord, good digestion, and also something to digest. Grant me a healthy body and the, necess necess the necessary good humor to maintain it. Grant me a simple soul that knows to treasure all that is good and that doesn't frighten easily at the sight of evil but rather finds the means to put things back in their place. Give me a soul that knows no boredom, grumblings, sighs and laments, no excess of stress because of that obstructing thing called I. Grant me, O Lord, a sense of good humor. Allow me the grace to be able to take a joke, to discover in life joy, and to be able to share it with others. Amen.
Thank you. The words of the creeds speak hope to our hearts and to our world. We're not just affirming some dry, crusty formulation. We're speaking hope and affirmation of what we believe and what we, how we want to live. Join us as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we pray. We pray for ourselves, for our family and our friends. We pray for our world. We pray for the church. We pray for people of hope, for people of goodwill. We pray for people who are suffering. We pray for people who are broken, for people who are needy, for people who are misguided, for people who have been betrayed for people who have been manipulated or abused. We hold before God our world and our lives. Lord, make us aware that you are ever calling us and all people you are ever calling us to new visions and new ventures. You are calling us to receive your love, to spread your love and your light in our world. We pray for our communities, the communities to which we belong and in which we have an active share. We pray that we may see our daily work as part of our discipleship and our calling. Help us to still our lives and hear your calling at the beginning of this new year. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world. We pray that God may establish among the nations his scepter of justice and mercy and righteousness. This week we pray for the United States of America as a new president is inaugurated. We pray for a coming together of that land. We pray for the leadership in this country of Germany and in our home countries, especially at this time of global pandemic. We pray for the leaders of the nations. We pray for wisdom. We pray for generosity of spirit, that the vaccine may be shared among all nations, among the poorest, as well as the richest in our world. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. We pray for people who are ill at this time, for our health services, our hospitals, our doctors and nurses, those who are nursing loved ones at home. We pray for all who are suffering through illness or the COVID-19 virus. We hold them before God. We hold before God those we know in need of his healing touch this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that God may bind up the brokenhearted, that God may restore and raise up those who have fallen. We pray for those who are struggling at this time with depression or with loss of income or with broken relationships. We pray they may seek health and wholeness in God, in Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth, and the life. We thank God for counsellors, therapists, psychotherapists, all who seek to bring comfort and a listening ear. We pray for healthy communities, healthy families, where there is respect and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before God the dying, those who have lost their lives in recent days and weeks, and those who will die this day. We hold them to the light too. Praying for the bereaved and those who sit and watch with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for God's creation. We thank God for the beauty and wonder of the world, the beauty and wonder of the different species, the assortment of people and personalities of animals and plants and the stars of the sky. And we pray that in this time of pandemic, we may have a renewed sense of the glory of God's creation and a renewed desire to respect creation and to work for sustainability for future generations and the poorest of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Offering our hearts and our prayers for one another and for our world, we pray together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another at home or in our thoughts an offering of peace. Peace be with you.
blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. The crowds came out to see your son Yet at the end, they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. Send your Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Be what you see and become who you are, the body of Christ. as our Saviour himself has taught us. So together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your love may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray for God's blessing to be upon us and upon our world this week. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this epiphany tide and always. Amen.
I would like to thank you at the beginning of this new year for those of you who have supported St. George's Church in monthly donations to help us to keep the church open even in this time of pandemic. Thank you so much for those of you who have financially supported the church. And I'd like to ask, for those of you who can't or haven't been able to up to now, please do consider what support you might be able to give our community at this time. Do try and keep in touch with one another. Remember to phone people who you know are on their own at this time, who are locked in because of the pandemic. Do pray. Do pray for God to be with all people, especially remember the poorest who have the least protection in our world. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.